Today, as always, actually, is a very special lesson. I just love this method. I, I love those lessons and how they make me feel and what I learn in them. And I hope uh, you do too. Hello and welcome to the sixth lesson in my introductory series to the Feldenkrais method of somatic education. The channel name is Feldenkrais with Alphonse and I am Alphonse. Alfonso. 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 Hayo. iPhone. Nani siang isia. Eh? Ta hui shuo chong wen ma? Meio. Meio. The lesson today fits very nicely in the theme we already begun, we already started. The theme also is about how to, I call it, how to fix forward head posture. For people who think that their head is pecking or too far forward or friends of them, very nice friends or not very nice friends, they told them that their head is sticking forwards and then they want to correct that. And there's a couple of lessons before, I advise you to do the lessons before. If you're not up to that, if you just want to jump right into this lesson, that's okay too. Nobody is gonna stop you anyways. We started out with flexion. We were talking about forward head posture. Maybe when the front side is tight, it pulls the head forwards. We want the front muscles to stop working so hard. And we want the muscles in the back, in the neck to... Mm, work in a way that makes sense, that contributes to well-being. We were working with the arms and with the hands and now we're going to go backwards. So maybe the area between the shoulder blades or the neck, these muscles feel very sore, feel very tight, but in fact they're not working properly. They're too long, they don't have power to pull back the head. Maybe, we don't know. So we will explore, we will try to find out more by exploring our movement patterns and at the same time improving how we move, how we organize movement, how we think about movement, how we feel movement. You see, with food we have to eat and then we're good for a while and then we start to be hungry and then we need to eat again. Same with sleep. <sighs> you know. We're well rested, it's okay for a while, we start to get tired and then we need to rest again. With exercise, you have to exercise, then you're strong, and then you start to get weak again, and then you have to exercise again. But with movement, it's not exactly the same. With movement, we can move in ways that damages us. We can move in ways that makes us feel bored about life, unhappy, not content, feeling that life is just a burden. Or we can move in a way that makes us happy, that gives us strength, that gives us perspective, that makes us feel like every time we move we get better, we improve, we feel, we feel better after we move. So how it's going to be in two years, how will it be in like five years or ten years if we're constantly improving our movements. The lesson today is a little bit difficult, so I split it up into three parts, three lessons, complete lessons. I will spread out over three videos. We start very simple and it, then it gets more and more difficult, just like in school. As always, we, you will need a carpet space or a floor space. Without further ado, let's get to it. Let's start this lesson. Alright, as most of the time we will start on the back with the feet standing or long, just as you like. Just feel how you are on the floor today, how you're lying, how is your relationship to the floor, do you feel soft, do you feel like you're melting on the floor or you like the floor is like a burden to you, you don't like want to lie down. How is it? How do you feel on the floor? And we will, we will spend the next half hour, 25, 20, I guess 30 minutes on the floor. But not on the back. We want to extend in the other direction. I myself, I don't like to rotate. I like to roll. 
Either way, please come to lie onto your front side, on your chest. I have to take care of the microphone. I will put the microphone here and I hope it will still work. And when you're lying on your front side, so I know many people don't like the front side. That's because the front side can be very tight. And when the front side is very tight, then lying on the front side is no fun. It just doesn't feel comfortable. But we will work with this. It should get more comfortable. If you're already comfortable on your front side, some people, they love to sleep on the front side. In any account, how you say, in either account, Come to rest on your front side with the legs long, with the hands wherever you want, with the face turned to one direction, or you can press your nose against the floor, whatever you like. Just be on the front side a little bit. And feel the room, room, room. Feel the room in your back that you can breathe with your chest backwards. There's place to inhale backwards. You see that the chest is like a box with six sides. Front, back, up, down, or top, bottom, left, right. And it, it can expand in all these directions. It's, you don't just breathe down or breathe into the front, you can also breathe into the back. But I guess you knew that. I hope you knew that. So we start simple with the obvious. Feel out for symmetry. If you feel you're breathing more into the right side of your chest or do you breathe more into the left side of your chest? Or you feel no difference? How, how do you breathe at all? And this is not a breathing lesson. Breathing lesson is next lesson. We will start with a small movement. So you're lying on the floor and don't do much, just, just listen first. You lie with your front side on the floor, not, not like me. I'm on, don't, don't, don't watch me. Feel into yourself. Feel, feel how you feel. Bring your awareness into your body. And you have two legs. I hope you have two legs and two arms and a spine. So that's like five lines of the body. And your head. I hope you have a beautiful head. And bring your awareness, your attention to your head. Like the whole of it. Your complete head with your ears and your nose and your forehead and your hair and very slowly, slow, 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 very slowly and minuscule, very small, start, start, don't, don't like go full throttle, but start slowly to lift the head a little bit and then let it down again. Just, just feel how you do it. So we start very, very slowly. Just a little, tiny little bit. Lift your head a little, tiny little bit and then let your head sink down again. It's, it's not like an effort, but you, you change tonus. The muscles, they pull a little bit stronger and then they stop pulling. So you lift your head in whichever direction your, your face is, is facing or the back of your head. You lift it a little bit and then let it down again. Just to get a feel, a first feel of what's happening. Because the head is not the head alone, it's not a balloon, but it's attached to the spine and there's, there's, there's a large structure and there's so many muscles, tendons, ligaments, nerves and lymph system and receptors, and it's millions of things. And organs, of course all the th things inside the chest. Continue a little bit. Lift it, just get a feeling where you lean against. 
Where do you lean against when you lift your head? And then bring your head down again. And if you can, take a little rest on your front side. So that wasn't much, just a small lifting of the head. Rest for a second then. Now we have to do something with the hands. Bring the hands close to your head. Just the hands close to your head and, and turn your head. If the, Don't turn your head. Just keep your head comfortable, but the, the hands close to your head. And lift your head in this position. A little bit more and bring your head down again. Just a little bit. Lift your head with the hands next to your ears somewhere. And don't, don't, don't push with the hands. The hands are just resting next to your head. So this is movement number two. And it's a little bit more difficult because the hands are in a position where you could push. But don't push. Just rest your, your arms on the floor and lift your head like this. And feel into your chest, into the ribs, your pelvis, with your legs. Any, any, any reaction over there, down there, in the back, on the side. And then let go again. Let the head down again. And try, try this a couple of times. Just lift the head a little bit and then let it go down again. So this is very cozy, very slow. There's not much happening yet. We start very easy. Right? Now, turn your head to the left so that your face is facing to your left. And put your hands on top of each other and put your right ear onto the top hand. And the left knee, so you could either put your left foot on top of your right foot or the instep of your left foot on top of your right heel somewhere or snug the left foot over your right foot. Maybe that's a position you could assume or you could just stand your toes of your left foot. You don't cross over your legs, you can, but you you don't have to, you can try both variations and start to lift your left knee. That's right, you lift the left knee off the floor a little bit and then bring the left knee down again. There's many ways to do this. Be a little bit creative, imaginative. How can you lift your left, how can you lift your left knee a little bit and bring the left knee down again? So you can have that with your left leg long or your left leg crossed over your right leg. You can have the toes of your left foot standing on your right heel. Or the toes of your left foot standing crossed over your right foot. You could lift your whole left leg. Ah, this is difficult. Huh? Lifting the left leg. No. In any account, at any account, will I ever get this phrase right? At any account, your left leg will straighten a bit when you lift your left knee. Can you feel that? So it's really about introspection. We're starting slow in this lesson. We will come to a point. And this is not a lesson about stretching or, the, or, or muscle training. This is really an exploration into yourself at how your body works. Very detailed, very detailed. If you haven't done the Feldenkrais or worked with Feldenkrais before, Feldenkrais method of somatic education, then that's something you have never done before. It's something new. So it's very gentle, very comfortable. So we are, we are in this relaxed state so we can really explore. It's more like taking a rest and at the same time move a little bit and explore how you can lift your left knee and how your left leg lengthens 
when you lift the knee and how it shortens when you let the knee down again. You can even pull up your left knee a little bit to your side, like in a small crawling position, as if you would pull up the left knee on the floor to take a little crawling. But just a little bit, just a tiny little bit. Or this crawling position and with your left foot hooked over your right foot, snuggled over your right foot, just as you like. You lift your left knee a little bit and then bring the left knee down again. <clears throat> if I wouldn't be talking, you could think of many other things while doing this movement. And then take a short rest. Bend your left knee a little bit again, just a tiny little bit, and then your right, the left foot over your right foot, maybe, or your left foot close to your right foot. It's not, it's not that important where is it exactly, just the general direction. It's not important if your right hand is on top of your left hand or the left hand on top, it's not important, but your face should face to the left. And now lift your left hip joint a little bit. I had this whole hip joint series. I, I, hope you have a, a, I hope you have an image where is your left hip joint. So left hip joint, it's not the outside of your left leg. It's somewhere inside your left leg on top at your groin, close to your groin. I have a couple of videos explaining this in, in great detail. But for now, just imagine your left pelvis is lifting a little bit, and please lift your left pelvis a little bit. Oh, see what kind of contortions you have to do to lift your left pelvis and then bring your left pelvis down again to the floor. And try to make this easy, S gentle. Some, try to make it like a movement you feel comfortable with. To lift the left hip joint off the floor and keep the left knee on the floor. Try this a couple of times. You keep the left knee on the floor, you just roll. You roll your pelvis a little bit to the right. So your right side of your body presses more against the floor and the left side lifts a little bit. And then stop again. Let's take a break on the back. Just roll back onto the back. I like to roll, I don't like to rotate. So you're on your back, take a short break on your back just to check how do you feel like, how do you feel now on your back. And then come back onto the front side. With your left foot a little bit closer to your right foot or right leg, with the left knee a little bit bent. And now straighten your left knee, lift your left knee a little bit and your left hip joint, both together. Oh, how is it working? <clears throat> As before, you can stand your left foot onto your right heel if you like, or you can have your left foot crossed over your right leg. And do these two movements we just did together. Lifting the left knee by elongating your left leg and also lifting your left hip joint. Let's try to see if you do that separately or you do them both together or in a sequence, first the knee, then the hip joint. Try to move them together. So we are combining these two movements. It's a sequence. It's separate movements and we combine them to make a sequence. So you lift your left knee and your left hip joint. Yeah? Until you get a good feeling for how you do this. And maybe you start to feel connections up to your shoulder blades, up to your right side, to your head. It will get stronger through the lesson. Now we do a third movement. Please bring your left hand to standing in front of your face. So the left hand stands in front of your face, like a push-up position. 
do the same thing, like lift your left knee, lift your left hip joint, and with the left hand push against the floor to help, to help rolling, to help to lift the left knee. to help to lift the left hip joint. You can put your hand wherever you want, actually, just to help with the shoulder to roll. That's not so easy. You can do whatever you want to make this feasible. You can not know what you want. The correct expression would be do whatever is necessary. So clever. My right leg is a little bit so sore from too much walking. I can feel the muscles of my upper right leg when I roll over them. Whoa! <laughs> ay, 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 ay. And then, please roll onto your back. Take a short break on your back. Just so we have a break, we stop doing what we have been doing, we can start fresh and at the same time you can feel maybe there's a difference how you're lying on your back, how you perceive your left side compared to your right side. Maybe roll your head a little bit to the left and to the right and see if there's a difference in rolling the head to the left and to the right. Just check, is it symmetrical? Is there a difference in your right side compared to your left side? And then roll onto your belly or your front side again, please. Um, please tell me if I'm too slow. I don't think I'm too slow. But if it's too slow for you, please tell me. But uh, I think it needs to be a little bit slow. So you're on your front side again. with the hands on top of each other, the face to the left, the right ear on top of the upper hand. Bend, bend your left knee a little bit, maybe uh, bring your left foot over your right foot or on the left instep on top of the right heel. Just something like this. And then lift your left knee again by extending your left leg and just See how that feels now, after we did this, all these movements. How does it feel? How did you improve your sensing, how you sense this movement? Maybe try to even lift your left leg a little bit and see how that feels like. Is it easier to lift the leg? Is it easier to extend the knee and straighten the leg? Lift your left hip joint also and see, is that easier? For me it's a lot easier, but I already did this lesson a couple of times the last week to prepare for it. So every time I do it, it gets more easy. It's quite interesting. Better organized. The movement starts to be better organized. And there's definitely a connection to the right shoulder and the right shoulder blade. Yeah? Oy, so easy. Then we will do the same thing on the right side. For this I will turn over, so you don't have to look at the back of my head. Please turn your face to the right, bring the hands on top of each other and your left ear on top of your hand, the back of your hand, whatever hand is on top. Maybe a word of caution, I hope it's not too late. If your neck hurts easily, you have to turn your head in between or lift your head in between or maybe come to lie onto your back in between and then come return onto your front side. Just really take good care of yourself. Be good to yourself. Try to make yourself comfortable. Don't strain, don't feel any pressure. Don't feel pressured to do something. That's an important lesson for life, actually. 
we are so used to getting pressured and to accept pressure, to accept doing things that are not good for us, like sitting on chairs, for example, for too long, even if that feels comfortable sometimes, but let's continue with the lesson. So you're on to your front side, facing to your right, bend your right knee a tiny little bit, bring your right foot maybe over your left foot, but you don't have to explore different positions and start to lift your right knee a little bit. And by doing so, your right leg elongates. Your right leg becomes longer and then the knee folds again a little bit, bends again a little bit when you bring the knee downwards. So explore this movement of lifting your right knee and at the same time, of course, elongating your right leg. The many different ways you can do this movement. You can lean against your toes, you can have the foot in different positions, the leg in different positions, further to the right further to your left leg, crossed over your left leg. You can put your right toes standing on top of your left heel. At any time you want to relax your neck, you can turn your head and then bring the head back again. So now let's continue with the next movement. Put your right foot over your left foot, your right knee a little bit bent, like in a crawling movement. Feet don't have to be crossed actually, just a little bit of a crawling movement and put your right foot wherever you feel comfortable. And lift, this is the movement, lift your right hip joint. Please lift your right hip joint a little bit off the floor by rolling your pelvis and then back down again. Lift your right hip joint. And does this feel easier already than on the other side? Do you feel more subtle? More easy to move? Like all the parts, all your bones are not as stiff anymore. Your muscles are not preventing this movement so much anymore. Keep your right knee on the floor when you roll your right hip joint to the left. Uh, when you lift your right hip joint from the floor. And then combine, combine those two movements, lifting your right knee and lifting your right hip joint simultaneously or one after the other. And the many different ways of doing that. Actually, you can put your head in whatever position you like. We will learn more about this in the next two lessons. Try also to lift your right leg a little bit by lifting off your right knee from the floor and the right hip joint. Try to find a way to make that easy. Actually, it should become easy by itself. That's why we're doing, that's why we are doing this movements and movement combinations. All right, and take a short break. Now bring your right hand to stand on the floor in front of your face, which is turned to the right. And again, lift your right knee, your right hip joint and push with the right hand against the floor and then come back again. You can cross over your right foot over your left if you like. And see if you can feel a connection actually up to your shoulder blades, up to your neck, up to your head. When you lift your knee and you lift your right hip joint and actually you lift your right shoulder in this regard. We're doing this a couple of times and then take a break, maybe take a break on your back.
how is it for you, lying on your back? For me, it's a big difference to the beginning. Even though I've been doing this for, even though I've been doing this method for so many years, I can still learn. I can still improve. I always find something new. It's so exciting in a way. It's interesting. That's more like it's deep. It's touching me deeply. I'm more connected to the floor. I start to forget my worries. And I can focus on being. And enjoying uh, my movements. I hope you can do. Uh, too. I hope you can too. Do I hope you can do. I hope you can do it too. All right. Then please come back onto your front side. With both hands close to your head. Head any direction, you can face to the right or to the left, just or in the middle, whatever you like. And start to lift both hip joints at the same time. Lift both hip joints off the floor so you're leaning more against the belly and then bring down your hip joints again. And try to do this a couple of times. So there's a space between your hip joints and the floor and then bring down your hip joints again. So basically you start to hump the floor. But it's not like an old humping <laughs> movement. It's lifting the hip joints off the floor and then letting them sink down again. And you, you focus on your hip joints and not on your middle part of your pelvis. And allow your knees to bend a little bit and then elongate. And of course your back has to participate in this. And after you did this for a couple of times, lift your head again a little bit. Yes, lift your head again. Wow. Do you feel the difference? And bring the head down again. Lift the head a little bit and see, don't help with the arms, yes, and, and see how you can, how you experience that through your whole spine. Your back shortens, the muscles in your back can shorten, but the whole back can work together. It's like 12 ribs and lots of muscles, oh, so many muscles on the back. It's a different kind of organization, it's much smoother, everything works nicely together. You reach more freedom in more... Uh, Choices, you can do more, more locations, more positions, variety. Try this a couple of times to enjoy how, how you lift your head. You can lift and turn the head, or you can face to the right, lift the head, and bring your head down with facing to the left, and up again, and turn it again to the other side. So each time you lift your head and bring it down, you're facing another direction. You can lift your head and see how that affects your hip joints. If your hip joints lift when you lift the head and then bring down the head and the hip joints again. You can try again the same movements we did with lifting the one knee and one pelvis and lift the head. Or on the other side, just what we did in this lesson. Play a little bit with these movements and feel how they improved, how, how easy it became to do them. All right, then please come to sit and we will continue with the ideas from this lesson. In, in the next lesson, in the next video, we'll introduce more ideas and we'll continue with the pattern of extension the pattern of being able to lift the head, look up, <laughs> let go of the front side, also contract the back side better, give these muscles something to do in the back, invite them to be part of ourselves, of yourself, of myself again, 
be more easily upright. Easy upright. That's quite something. So please, come float up to standing. We had this beautiful lesson with the hand. We just float up. See if you can still find this movement of floating up. I think it was lesson number, lesson number five, last lesson. Floating up. Floating up from sitting to standing. And see how that is like standing where you can put your head, you can put your head in front, but you can put it on top, you can put it too far in the back, you can look up, you transfer this movement of lifting the head, we did on the front side, lying down, you can have the same thing when you're standing, which is looking upwards, it's so nice. The sky, the birds, the skyscrapers, the trees, the ceiling and the lights on the ceiling, <laughs> yeah, take a few steps and enjoy this freedom of uh, flexibility. We didn't use stretching, it's just such a natural way of moving and through movement we improve. We improve many things. All right, so you can practice a little bit with those movements. I try to have the new video up by tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. You can continue with this series. Please leave a comment if you want to share something. Please like the video, that's important for my channel. And thank you for participating. See you in the next video.